Company member Greg Parati. I sent a letter to Aaron asking if he'd be willing to meet with me. I never heard back, so I called Father Roger to see if he could help. Well, I will write to him too. And Greg, ask Aaron about his remorse. Remorse is a funny thing, it, it changes, it bends backwards. And then hopefully by the time we die, we have our remorse in the correct perspective. Now I think that Aaron is not yet finished finalizing his experience of remorse. And remorse is something that's important to all of us. So I will write to him today. And Greg, do him justice. But Father, how do I do Aaron McKinney justice? Well, you get to know him. Now I will write to him today. Aaron never responded to Father Roger's letter. So I put in a request at the prison, and they approved it. So I, I went ahead and I booked my flight. I answered all the questions, filled out all the forms, went through all the metal detectors, and all the pat-downs. And as I set foot in the prison, I still didn't know if Aaron was willing to meet with me. But as I went through the last alley port and into the visiting room, there Aaron was. He was seated in the very first seat. <laughs> he, had, he had very bright green eyes, and he had a lot of tattoos on his arms. But there was this one on his right forearm that read, Trust no one. He gave my hand a firm shake under the low metal partition, and as the security guard left, he said, That's it. Oh, you can't reach over the partition again. Oh. Oh, okay. Aaron, thank you so much for meeting me. I threw your letter out. I thought you were the media. There was no way in hell I was going to meet with you. I hate the fucking media. But, you know, when I got Father Rogers' letter saying you're a friend of his, I said, you know, hell, I'll meet with you. You know, Father Roger, he's a good man. Definitely considering family. Yeah. I love Father Roger. Yeah. Big smile and the wind blowing back in his face. It's my picture of Father Roger. Amazing tattoos you have. Oh, thanks, yeah. Yeah, uh, some guys in here do some real good work. Homemade ink. I mean, they took a guitar string up to a battery and everything. But, uh, you know, it's not allowed in here. So you gotta have you know, people looking out for the guards. You gotta stop when they come. It takes forever. But, uh, uh, yeah, look at this. Check this out. I am working on a full shirt. Wow, see that? Like, you know, well, that's, uh, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Aaron, you know that we wrote a play and you're one of the characters in it, right? I heard about it. I didn't read it, you know, I haven't seen it or anything, I just heard about it. Well, um, you know, what we did is, you know, we um, just took your words, the actual words from the trial transcripts, uh, from your interview with Roger Free, and, um, you know, that's the only thing we have here, so. The, the, the trial transcripts? Yeah, you know, we were interviewing people and talking with them, but we were unable to meet with you. Okay. And, um, so now we're just, you know, talking with the people 10 years later to see how their lives have changed, well, which is why I'm here, to see how, if your life has changed over the 10 years. How's it been like in prison all these years? Yeah, this place ain't too good. It's freezing in here. I mean, this in a thin blanket is all you get. Even for outside, and in the winter, it's fucking freezing. They're real strict in here, too. You know, they keep us locked in our cells all but one hour a day. So, what about the other 23 hours? What about them? I don't do much. Just work out, sleep, you know, watch TV. I'm not a big reader. I have read a couple of books, though. Oh, I read Iceman. You ever read them? Oh, uh, no, I haven't. Oh, it's great. It's about a hitman for the mafia. Yeah. Oh, I read a couple books about the Germans, too. They were pretty informative. I'm interested in that kind of stuff. And Eric, can you 
tell me where else you've been? Well, they moved me to Russ about five times, but you know, we're always together. Uh, Wyoming was shit. Uh, Nevada, Nevada was kind of scary, actually. A lot of gangs. But uh, Texas, though. Texas was a dream. Pretty free. You know, I hope we get put back in Texas. Well, do you think you'll get to go back? <laughs> no telling. Uh, I heard we're getting thrown back in Wyoming. That's going to suck. And uh, as far as your lawyers are concerned, <coughs> do you think you'll get out of prison altogether? <laughs> are you kidding me? Uh, I am never getting out of here. Dude, I'm like the poster child for hate crime murders. <laughs> Shit, for years after anything happened to a gay person, they throw my picture right up there, too. Yep, I'm never getting out of here. And you know, you gotta resign yourself to it. Or you go crazy. You just learn to enjoy yourself. But Russ, though, Russ might get out. Shit, he should get out of here. He doesn't belong in here. Do you see much of him here? Not every day. He's a good buddy of mine. Yeah, I give my life for Russ. You know, he didn't even do anything in the... Oh, so he didn't do anything that night? Nope. And I told him, do anything in my power to get him out of here, too. So, Aaron, can you actually tell me what did happen that night? Well, I got a pretty bad memory of the whole thing. Well, what do you remember? I mean, almost brand new, Smith & Wesson, 357 Magnum. I mean, it had a 10-inch barrel. Fucking huge, beautiful gun. Uh, so, you know, I went to the fireside, and I was in the mindset to rob. Oh, so you were looking for someone to rob? Yeah. So why Matt? Well, he was... He was overly friendly, you know. He was obviously gay, you know. Played a whole part in his, his weakness, his frailty. And uh, he was dressed nice, you know. Looked like he had a bunch of money. Oh, he was uh, drinking something expensive, too. What was that? Uh, Heineken, I think. But, uh, yeah, it looked like he had a bunch of money in his wallet. Shit, it only ended up being about 30 bucks, but... You know, so when he asked us for a ride, it was like, oh, come on, this is going to be easy. Okay, so it started off as robbery, and you just said you chose Matt because you knew that he was gay. But you've said many times that you don't like gay people. Yeah, I don't. <coughs> so him being gay had something to do with it. I might have played a small part. I mean... I did have hatred for homosexuals, but not I did it, so it's a possibility. So your hatred towards homosexuals played a part? It might have played a small part, yeah. But it sounds like more than a small part to me. You know in your interview with Robbie where you said that Matt put his hand on your leg and you thought he was trying to grab your balls, so that's why you hit him. When I said that? Yes, in your interview with Robbie Green. I don't know, maybe it happened. I barely remember that interview at all, anyway, but <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> no, you definitely said that. Well, then maybe it happened. Like I said, I barely remember that interview at all. So what do you remember? You're in the truck. <sighs> so, we're in the truck, and we're driving. I, uh, oh, I reached back to the back seat and grabbed my gun, you know, pulled it up to the front, and I uh, stopped him in the face with it. You know, like, rock time. Oh, hell, I even uh, poked him in the eye with it, too. You know, you got to be aggressive as folks when you're robbing them. So they believe the follow through. And so you made him give you his wallet? Yeah, I made him give me his wallet. Oh, one thing I remember that was really eerie. He 